Hi, this is Manos Brilakis from the Minneapolis Heart Institute, presenting case 5 for the second edition of the Manual of CTO Interventions. This is a case of retrograde CTO PCI that was completed using reverse card with intravascular ultrasound guidance. The patient was a 64-year-old man presenting with a stable angina as well as heart failure symptoms. He had multiple previous PCIs as well as previous coronary bypass, with the only graft being patent being the Lima 2 LAD. He had an ejection fraction of 24%. He was referred for PCI of a right coronary artery CTO. The mid RCA was occluded at the takeoff of an acute marginal branch. This was seen in the area of view in which the vessel ends essentially in the acute marginal takeoff with severe calcification before and after the occlusion. The mid LAD was filling via Lima graft and there was also undergrade flow from the left main with significant disease in the LAD. However, this facilitated retrograde wiring through the left main by visualizing through Lima injections. And the same can be seen from injection in the iliocranial view, demonstrating nice collaterals from the LAD to the PDA and PLV, with a bifurcation of the distal cap of the CTO between the PDA and the posterior lateral vessel. So in summary, we had a mid-RCA CTO with an ambiguous proximal cap, long length about 60 millimeters, a bifurcation of the distal cap and septal collaterals from the LAD, which in turn filled via the lima. Therefore, given the ambiguous proximal cap as well as the bifurcation of the distal cap, the decision was to perform a primary retrograde approach with undergrade crossing reserved for retrograde failure. We are doing dual injection from the lima as well as the left main and then by visualizing from the lima we were able to surf through a septal collateral with the filter FC guide wire that advanced easily into the posterior descending artery. We were then able to advance the retrograde corsair all the way to the distal RCA but then had significant difficulty advancing past the bifurcation at the distal cap which is a common problem with such lesions. We were, however, able to advance an undergrade wire to the distal RCA, but then we had significant difficulty advancing a balloon through the mid part of the vessel, likely because of the severe calcification. We could not deliver even a 1.5 or a 1.25 balloon. So we did several actions that are part of the algorithm for the balloon uncrossable CTO. We did uh, attempts with a threaded microcatheter. We ruptured the balloon, did the so-called grenadoplasty, then did uh, injections with the tornus attempts to cross with the tornus catheter and with the laser catheter. And after doing that, we were able to partially advance a corsair into the mid uh, right coronary artery. Given the difficulty we had to advance equipment distally, we tried the car technique in which a balloon is inflated over the retrograde wire and we are trying to cross in the undergrade direction. However, CART was not successful in this case. We also did attempt the guideliner reverse CART trying to get the retrograde wire into a guideliner. However, this was not successful either. We tried to do reverse CART in a different location in a higher part of the mid RCA. However, once again, we had difficulty going in. And then we performed intravascular ultrasound to see if we needed to use a larger balloon. We were using 2.5 and 3.0 balloons until then. However, after using IVUS, we upsized to a 3.5 balloon. And then that allowed the retrograde pilot to advance more proximally. However, we were not sure if the retrograde wire was into the aorta or if it was in the wall of the aorta. We therefore did intravascular ultrasound, which demonstrated that the retrograde wire was indeed into the proximal true lumen. We know that this is the retrograde wire because the shadow of the ultrasound beam behind the wire. And this wire is indeed in the proximal true lumen and then all the way up into the proximal RCA. And then the wire essentially exits into the aorta. So doing intravascular ultrasound was very reassuring that we indeed had 
crossing into the proximal true lumen. We then advanced the retrograde wire into the undergrade guide catheter. We advanced the retrograde corsair into the undergrade guide, switched for an externalization wire, and then performed a predilation with several uh, 2.5 to 3.5 millimeter balloons. After doing that, we were able to line the vessel with several drag eluting stents, overlapping from distal to mid and to the proximal right coronary, all the way to the ostium, which were then post dilated at high pressures with a 3 balloon, with a nice result. We do have a restoration of undergrade flow into the right coronary. We do have flow both in the PDA and the PLV, and the stents appear to be well expanded. Of course, in always this case in the retrograde, we check the vessel, make sure there is no perforation or injury, and indeed there was no such injury in the left system. So in summary, this case demonstrates several of the uh, potential difficulties with the retrograde approach. The first is that in cases with ambiguity and the proximal cap and distal cap at the bifurcation, a primary retrograde may be useful. The second is that in heavily calcified vessels, it may be hard to deliver a balloon and it's important to have an algorithm for going step by step to cross with the balloon into that lesion. The third is that reverse card can be challenging, but can be facilitated by changing the re-entry location, using the guideliner sometimes for being the target for the retrograde wire. The very most important component is using an undersized balloon and sometimes IVUS can help us upsize the balloon without uh, risking having rupture of the proximal vessel and that's exactly what happened in this case by using IVUS we were able to use a bigger balloon and then successfully complete the reverse card. Thank you.